Hello everyone and welcome to the Zero K November 2021 V1 tournament. I'm your host Dominic or Chad Fury, whichever you prefer. And we have a massive tournament today. 30 signups at least. There might have been more people added in the meantime. I'm not 100% sure, but last I checked there are 30. If there are more than 30, I'm afraid you may fall off the standings as I there are more than 30! You're not going to be all in the standings. I'm sorry. The standings are going to be incomplete. I just do not have the room to show them all on stream. But thank you so much, all of you, for signing up. This is... This is the biggest tournament we have had. Ever. I'm... Honestly kind of blown away. I didn't expect this would happen. Like, normally, you know, we, we have about half as many people signing up. But today, it's just... 34 people signed up. I mean, obviously, there's going to be some people probably don't show up, but my goodness, this is surprisingly big. It, encouragingly big, honestly. So we're going to be starting out once the tournament lobby gets sorted out. It takes a little while just to get everything set up, but that is going to be interesting. So for... I'm not sure these are final. If they are, I kind of want to start out with Dregs and Pet Turtle, though I expect that we might end up seeing quite a few, like, multi-round, or multi-match rounds. Just as a thing, like, you know, because you're okay, you can just jump into a game and it'll catch up. It's not always the best thing to do, because it's a little hard to follow at speed. But, it's, you know, so I expect to see multiple, but yeah, I think... Dragon Pet Turtle, if the bracket is final. But... I'm not 100% sure, because I think we're still adding a couple last-minute signups. So yeah, we are... going to be starting out... So this is, of course, a Swiss tournament. As most of our tournaments are. And for each round... The each player gets to ban one of three maps. So the, in round one, we have Desert Rumble, Cobalt Dream, and Fallendale. All brand new maps. So for those of you who haven't been following recent developments in 0K, there have been about eight new maps added to the game in early October. Well, late, later September, early October. And all three of these are some of those new maps. I have shown... Cobalt Dream and Fallen Doll on stream. I haven't actually had a chance to show Desert Rumble on stream yet. And I'm really curious if that will work. I feel like of the three, it's the most even. But it's up to the players. Whichever one they... Whichever one they hate the least. Oh, for Moo and Chat. Yeah, there's typically a tournament... Well, every month isn't... It's not as a rule, but yeah, that's roughly the frequency. Every month or two. Just... You know, keep up. It is, you know, check the news or whatever. It'll it'll come up. Just, yeah. Okay, so we have 32 players, ultimately. But yeah, so for tournaments, they do come up every... Huh? Yeah, there we go. They do come up every, I'd say, couple months at minimum. So I wouldn't expect, like, I just, you know, keep, keep your ear to the ground. Keep your ear to the ground. I do try to talk about them, but I've not been streaming every week recently, so it's harder to do. But yeah, it is, hmm. Man, now I'm trying to think. How are we going to, we should advertise that. If, it's, if people are missing the tournaments, huh, I don't know what to do. I don't know, just... Keep at, keep an eye on the news, middle of the month ish. Now, since the bracket is apparently final, I ooh Dregs and Randy. Oh, that'd be a really cool game to start out with. Yeah, I want to watch Dregs and Randy.
Okay. So this is going to be a bit tricky. There's going to be a lot of... Ooh, wow. Wow. A lot of lobbies here. Oh, did they get automatically jump thrown in? Oh, that is cool. Okay, you guys can't really see it. I can't really show it to you because it just happened. But it looks like Akuna made some changes to the infrastructure to allow to basically pick the players that are in the tournament and then throw them into the match directly. That is cool. That's going to speed things up so much. So yeah, with that, we have the match coming in. Oh, and I've gotten a Prime sub. Well, thank you very much, Jazzcast. Anyway, we have... Now, oh, for the real record, I don't normally as a rule read up subs, so this Jazzcast, you got lucky. <laughs> feel, feel special. Anyhow, once the players sort this out... All right, Dregs, Bands, Fallen, Dell, Randy, and the Desert Rumble, or Cobalt Dream, whichever one they like the least. Or I guess they just pick the one they like the most, because it's the same choice, really. Oh. Never mind, Fallen Dell is in fact not what Drex is going to get rid of. Okay, well. Never mind, Cobalt Dream is out, so that means Fallen Dell or Desert. Desert Rumble, which I'm guessing Randy's gonna go with Desert Rumble. I don't. I don't, I don't see Fallen Dell, but maybe, maybe. There might be their style. Oh, they are going to move Fallen Dell. How about that? All right. So, yeah, we have Fallen Dell as the first map. And this will be pretty cool, actually. I haven't seen Fallen Dell. I've only seen once Fallen Dell. I mean, I've seen it. I've seen it once, but it was a few weeks ago, and it was one of those brand new. And the players playing it didn't really have much experience on it. Now we have a tournament with two of the top players in the game, who have experience with. Well, they have experience with this map. They are both apparently really strong with the other two, and that's why we have the map ban system because that way it's like you know, the battlefield's kind of even ground. So with that, we are going to be getting started. <laughs> like, yeah. I don't know why the way to be ready. I'm I'm ready. I'm always ready. If I'm here, if I'm in the room, I'm ready. Like don't don't wait. I like I can only fill for so long. I can only vamp for so long. Get me a match so I can actually have something to talk about that's on screen. Please save me. Oops. Huh? Why is this not? Oh, there we go. So we begin. We are. So yeah, Fallen Del not a map I have had a chance to see much very often. But as you can see, kind of flat, kind of. Well, I mean, it's actually kind of interesting. I was say it's, you know, kind of the, you know, slow, like, valley in the middle that goes up. And then it, the fact that a curve is in the center doesn't make it that simple of a valley in the middle situation. Which is a neat touch. So there's room to gain the high ground as you approach your opponent's base, even from the center. But, of course, it also means there's defensive positions that are in the direct rush path. 
So there's no low ground direct rush path. You can always kind of... It's always a reason to go up the side anyway. Anyway, we are going to be getting started right away. So we have... Dregs over here with Glokabot Factory and Randy on the eastern side of the map going for spiders on the map this flat. I can see there's some use for cliffs here and there, but I am going to be very interested to see what happens. It's not like spiders can't work on flat maps, but it's going to be interesting. And Okay, so the spectators are thinking Venom OP, but the thing is Venom got nerfed recently. Like, Venom just got nerfed. Or no, did it? I thought it did just get nerfed. Yeah, it got... It was, there was a very recent adjustment right before the tournament started. Well, anyway. Dreg's going for pretty fast glaze. Not... I mean, now that I know it's spiders, I expect we'll be seeing Ro Ronin pretty quickly. But I don't know. Dreg's is... I feel like Drex is just going to want to stick to Glaives as long as, like, pure mono Glaive as long as possible. Just because it gives you more mobility, lets you harass around the map more. Spiders are not quick, as a rule. So being able to outspe outspeed them with Glaives is an extremely powerful raiding tool, and Drex is going to take full advantage of it if they can. I mean, if they manage to catch this Weaver, well, that Weaver's dead. If they manage to catch pretty much anything else, it's, honestly, if they catch anything, it's dead. There's not a whole lot that you can really do that is going to work especially well that isn't just, you know, try to barrel down their base with Venoms, Redbacks, and maybe, and well, and Recluses. But anyway, the Venom is here. Now, bear in mind, Venom can't really permastun on its own the way it used to. As you can see, it only has, like, a tiny little stun. Although... The extra damage does help. It's not bad. Gets rid of a glaive for 200 metal. Not really worth the cost. I mean, granted, that was also 400 metal worth of glaive. So it's not the worst thing in the world. I mean, if you're making, if you require two times metal to kill a riot unit, it's about right. Though with two Venoms coming in here, it's going to be interesting. Looks like... This is just Mono Venom Spam. Mono Venom Spam versus... What looks like Mono Glaive... No, we got to switch. Switch over to Reaver and Knight. Dregs wants to show Randy how stunning works. <laughs> it's like, you think you have stuns. I have Knights. Even though Knights are like twice the cost. Almost twice the cost. 350 to 200. But, considering that there's going to be fewer Venoms than there are Glaives, and, you know, the fact that Knight doesn't have splash damage isn't going to be too big of a problem. So with that, the Glaives just coming around the side. I mean, they're going to have... Sure to find something. It's just... What are they going to find? A lot of defenses, and a few Venoms! But at this point, Dregs doesn't really have much. I mean, they've got they've got a lot of economy, but Randy is keeping up with that. They've got some defenses around the map, which is fine. It's just that you know Dregs is going for a much heavier army. Granted, it's sorry, I should say Randy's going for a much heavier army, or at least they could easily transition into one. Dregs actually is going for a much heavier army. It was my I that wasn't really a Freudian slip. That was correct. Because the knight's coming out here, and all Randy's doing is massing Venoms. I'm really surprised you aren't seeing Recklesses alongside the Venoms. I mean, if you think about it, the counter for Venom is going to be Ronin. Or maybe Knight, I guess. And the counter from the Spider Factory to that is going to be Recluse. Not to mention, if you start stunning out a bunch of Glaives with the Venoms, it's still you're dealing a lot more damage if you use the Recluse to just wipe out the lot. But no, Mono Venom. Oh, never mind. There we are. There's the Recluses. And Redbacks, too, just for good measure. Well, Dregs is. 
Okay, Dregs... This is the thing Dregs likes to do. It, Dregs really likes setting up a lot of pork on the front lines. I see Randy coming in here with the lotuses, trying to just deal with the stinger before it's done and repaired. A little bit of a tricky option, but it might work. Venom's come in here. Take out the... Oh, very nicely done taking out the stinger. Well, that's the north side broken. They're, like, Randy retreating from the north side. Doesn't really have a whole lot to hold it with. Sorry. I'm saying Randy. Dregs on the left. Randy on the right. Dregs on the left. Randy on the right. Dregs is retreating from the north. Dregs retreating very quickly from the north. Able to take the south at the same time, though. But Randy, with the reclaim they got from there, should be able to hold on for... Or hold on a stronger economy for about 30 seconds. Not a bad thing to have, and... Randy is... Oh, they only have two caretakers. However, they are building a lot of energy structures along the side, so they're, they'll be fine. They are using their metal, if not in the factory. Granted, it is, you know, 30 plus metal per second. I could see either building a plate or a second factory. Considering the strategic situation right now, Dregs... Honestly, what Dregs has, Randy can deal with. Just thinking what and the only thing is it's not really the most efficient approach. I mean You have the skirmishers, you have the red backs, you don't have a lot that's at speed. I honestly would I feeling like if you're really going galaxy brain with this, that jump out factory for firewalkers would be the way to go. Which I know it sounds a little weird, but like if you Soften up all the units, and the rest of these slower units... At, well, I guess Fireworkers are slow as well. But the rest of the units come in and start tearing it apart. That might work. Granted, it's also not really necessary. I mean, Randy could just continue with spiders. Build another caretaker, or build a spider spider plate or something. That'll be more than enough. Dregs, on the other hand, has also decided to continue going with pure cloaky. Really? There's no... There's no factory. There's no other factories. That That's it. Randy is pure cloaky. I'm really curious what they can see of each other. Randy... Oh, Randy can't see much. Entire southwest side is completely invisible to Randy. On the other hand, Dregs... Same thing. Okay, what the heck? Yeah, there's not much there that can be seen. So neither player really has a good idea of what the other is up to. At least not exactly. I mean, they're probably going off of just general game sense, but neither of them actually knows. Ooh, Venom's going in there. There's, like I said, this is what Dregs does. Just so many static defenses, and I don't know that it's the... I don't know it's a bad idea, but it doesn't seem like it's the best option. Over oh, the Ronin are a good idea! That's where I was thinking the Firewalkers would be useful. Which, again, Galaxy Brain take, but still. Because Reckless is do just fine. Yeah, Knight in the chat that... Or Ketabor in the chat pointing out that Knights... Knights of Venom's even matchup, but Venom's... Venoms allow for a lot more aggression from Randy than Randy is actually doing. Which is a fair point. Especially the, given that up to now, the Ronin weren't up. I mean, Randy knew they were inevitable, but they also prepared. I mean, they have Recluses up. So it's not like Randy was in a position where they weren't ready to deal with this. It's just, you know, it is a little bit tricky to deal with Ronin. As Recluses are, they're good against Ronin. Definitely outrange them, but... They're also kind of slow, so you got to be careful exactly with the positioning. Although, I like the red back over the cliff. Coming in here from Randy of the south side. Taking out some Ronin. Basically for free. Oh, is there a Sparrow up? Okay, sounds like Randy's gone for a Sparrow, so they actually will have some... Either Randy or Dreg's going for a Sparrow. It's like, yeah, that you want to do that, because, you know, people can do anything. You don't see it a lot because there is a sort of general idea of what is safe to do, but there's a lot you can just randomly do in this game, and... Oh! Southside for Randy getting opened up by Ronin, but Rex is coming in able to put a stop to that. I mean, Dregs does have that strong Southside position. At the same time, goes for... Oh, are they going for... What are they going for the Cornea? Spider doesn't really have a whole lot of units that need to be cloaked in order to function. Hmm. At any rate, Randy is continuing along with Redback Recluse. Just using the Venoms they had already built as 
a massive amount of power am amplification. Like, I don't really understand what's cloaked here. Like, yeah, there's the cornea, but it's not cloaking buildings, and it's not cloaking the commander while the commander is building stuff. And I don't think it radar... Or is it radar jam? Okay, I guess it does radar jam. Oh, okay, I see what's going on. That Okay, that's pretty clever. That is pretty clever. Yeah, I don't really see radar jamming come up all that much, but that's exactly what that's for. That's all that that's for, is just area radar jamming. Because that way... The slings can't see what's going on and can't attack Randy. Actually, okay, that's that's a pro tip right there. If you're trying to stop artillery from attacking you and you can, like, block the front lines but otherwise can't do much, yeah. Cornea just requires line of sight in order for them to actually hit anything, and that keeps that area safe. I was so used to seeing cornea being used for cheese strats where you use it, morph into an iris, and then tag it alongside your army so that your army is cloaked and can approach with impunity. But to use it as a radar jammer, that's actually surprisingly novel to me. <laughs> it's like, it's also got a perfectly normal use that doesn't involve a bizarre combo. And we are seeing an air switch as well coming in here for Thunderbird. That's a strong choice. Well, gunship switch coming in here from Dregs for Mass Lotus... Ooh, that is scary. Not very many redbacks have been built, so the lotuses can basic or locusts rather can basically do whatever they want. And this is the iris thing I was talking about. That was the strategy I normally expect. The iris coming in here from Dregs gets shut down, as do the locusts, or at least the locusts are forced to retreat. Whether or not they're shut down remains to be seen. However, the slings, well, the slings are stopped, but there's nothing there to follow up. The redbacks are way out of position, unfortunately. So Glaze coming in here. There are enough redbacks to be able to stop them, but the positioning is not great. Dregs! Dregs is doing amazing here, as long as they avoid any riots, which is going to be fairly easy. There's only one Stardust, and the redbacks are way too far away. These Glaives have essentially no resistance whatsoever. Coming in here, taking up the Geothermal Plant. Just gotta be careful. Don't get yourself blown up by the plant. There's Dregs moving away. And well played. Only losing one Glaive in the process. And from here, it's just... They pretty much just broke apart Randy's economy. Now, where they go from here remains to be seen. Randy should know what's here. Yeah, they, they know exactly if the glaze are there. But far more focused on going for essentially a base trade. Like, screw it. They have got a raid... Well, I've got a massive assault force. I'm going to go straight into their base and wipe them out. Or at least straight into their slings and wipe them out. Glaze, however, trying to come back around and don't quite manage to do much. To get rid of the pylon, which is... Fine. It looks like that... Oh, the pylon was a mistake. However, the Locust follow-up comes in here. Raptor's trying to deal with them, but... Locust still able to do some disruption. Not able to get a whole lot of damage in. Get rid of one Metal Electractor. Not even a single Caretaker. So, ultimately, Randy... They lost some energy. They lost some overdrive. But they were able to defend quite well regardless. And at the same time, the counterattack coming in here with all the Recluses. Now, the Thunderbird Strike here to stop the Slings from doing anything... And that should be death for the slings. Bit of a tough battle for Randy, but they did manage to break through. Reckless is able to get rid of all this, though. No redback support means the locusts are pretty much able to attack with impunity. Slings coming up here. Randy able to get their commander in to help out. But again, only one redback now managing to come in here. Gets rid of the locusts. Still a tricky situation. Obviously, you don't want to get them too close to the Ronin, and unfortunately, it got too close to the Ronin, and that is a dead recluse. Sorry, dead redback. The recluses are still mostly alive, but they are being whittled down by the slings. Randy actually losing out on attrition. That raid coming in here was surprisingly effective. In fact, Dregs right now... Oh my goodness. That raid was surprisingly effective. Without the energy and the static economy they had set up, they actually lost... I mean, they would have had some reclaim as well, but they basically went down from 60 metal per second to 30 metal per second. Dregs is really pushing hard here. I mean, you know, 8 glaives mid-game is a strong rate if your opponent doesn't see it coming. 
Well, that is yet another Thunderbird strike, though it just feels more and more like Randy is kind of fighting from the back foot. Randy able to rebuild his income more or less, gets the overdrive back up. Gets the metal extractors back up, getting a lot of reclaim from the deaths of everything. But still, that need to rebuild when Dregs is already behind on attrition is not going to be effective. Unfortunately, the Thunderbird isn't able to do too much on his own. Oh. Ooh, yeah. It's pointing out that there's... Okay, so, Cloaked, Cloaked Knights, this is going to be it. This is game. The Cloaked Knights. Anakin pointing out they're on fire at will, but it's... Thankfully for Dregs, there's nothing in the way that's going to intercept. Now, for reference, if you have the option, it's best to put them on to return fire, although that's by default not available. It's actually the reason why I, th I turned it on myself. You can turn it on, it's a setting, but... Yeah, this is, this is it. Randy has nothing to stop this, and their economy just now getting back more or less on par. But there it is, the knights come into the base. Air Factory is down, or very nearly down. Caretakers are down. Spider Factory has no chance, and Randy didn't really have much of an army other than what was up north, ready for an assault. Did not see this coming. Didn't have fleas, surprisingly enough, to try to try to screen for it. Granted, I think Randy built a single flea this entire game. Maybe three at most. After the first minute, there were no fleas built out of that factory. Ow. There it is. This Knights are back. Disarm is over. And that is it for the factories. Randy going in for a bit of a desperate counterattack. I don't see it really working out, though. The Knights able to wipe out Randy's entire energy infrastructure. Desperate attempts from Dregs to stop it. Sorry, from Randy to stop it, but Dregs is basically it. Randy, they do still have some economy, and they do have a pretty strong presence up north, which they're using to set up a rover assembly as a backup. But the slings can basically come in here, <laughs> manual target, manual target the metal extractor, because you know there's going to be a metal extractor there somewhere. So yeah, it's radar jammed, but screw it, you can, you can tell there's something. Same time, the knight's just able to wipe out everything that Randy had built. That was beautifully done. And of course, that unit is also a radar jammer. As we saw earlier. But yeah, what, what Dregs uses for there, that has been the primary use of the Coronia. You build that, you build the Iris, or in Dregs' case, they probably built the Iris directly from the factory, because that is a cloaky bite unit. So you build that, you run it in, and you're golden. Although, actually, that wasn't... Wait, that wasn't a... No, that wasn't an Iris. That was a Conjurer area cloak. Iris area cloak is much bigger. That was just Conjurer. But yeah, area cloak for the purpose of sneaking in units, that is a thing Cloakbot Factory does. And with the Conjurer being able to do the area cloak, as we just witnessed, that wasn't even an Iris. That's something you gotta watch out for. When you're in the Cloakbot matchup, you've gotta have screens, especially as spiders. Because spiders... Spiders cannot go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Cloakbot Factory for speed. Right. The Spiderbot Factory, as a rule, is an ambush factory. You have to know what your opponent is up to, and you have to set up your units so that you can stop them. Your, your units are slow, they're not especially strong, or not especially tough, they're quite strong, but not especially tough. And that means you've got to be very aware of where your opponents have set up, where they're planning to go, and that's why fleas are in the factory, so you can screen around. I think Randy got a little overconfident, thinking they knew exactly what Dregs was up to. And of course, if you were thinking, oh, but I need to build my other units, well, that's what the plates are for. Like, you spend a couple hundred metal, build a spider plate, spit out fleas, send them around the map just to know exactly what's going on, so you can't have units easily cross through into your territory that are cloaked, because they'll get spotted. And then you know exactly what's going on. So, very well done, Dregs. Great use of the Conjurer Area Cloak. I haven't really seen that used in action yet, but it is beautiful to see. So yeah, whenever you're playing Cloaky, just do that. Like, <laughs> well, okay, not just do that, because again, the counter to it is to have screening units, which, again, you can more easily do because of the plates. 
just Randy wasn't doing that. They were insistent on building single factories, which is, it kind of makes sense. That is traditional zero K. Okay. That is how you used to play the game. Anyhow, if we go back to the brackets. It looks like the, oh, <laughs> looks like two things have happened. One, I have accidentally scrolled down on the bracket itself. And two, that was the last match. Everyone else has completed their match. Oh, I should probably actually show you that the everyone else has completed their match. Yeah, that's the yeah, yeah. There we go. So yeah, that was the last match to be done. Everyone else is up, and well, that was the first round. I I am not going to enumerate this. You, if you're on a higher resolution screen, you can read it out. But yeah, I'm not going. Yeah, Spider, Randy was Spider. The Spider versus Cloakie. And it was actually a really good match. The only thing that Randy really missed is the fact that fleas, well, really I'd say plates, and the fact that fleas are really useful. Because Cloakbot Factory can do shenanigans, and fleas can basically put a stop to shenanigans.